Hi dear friends, my name is Prashant. I welcome you to my channel Crazy for DB. Today we are going to discuss about Oracle Process Architecture. So to begin with, we need to understand what process is. So here I give the definition of the process. Process can be called as a mechanism in an operating system that can run a series of steps. Any system application, when you run over computers, the operating system has to provide support for running of that system application. For example, Oracle is also a system application, that is database system application. And the operating system has to provide the support to carry out certain steps that are supposed to be carried out by the database system. And that is what we call as the process which provides the support to carry out the series of steps supposed to be carried out by the database system in this case. And the operating system has influence over the process and so the process is operating system dependent. Because the operating systems have many different modes of operation, there are various types of operating systems like uh, preemptive multitasking systems or cooperative multitasking systems and depending upon that we have actually the processes also configured uh, for Oracle accordingly on Linux Oracle background process is a Linux process so you see that when we run Oracle on the Linux platform and list the processes on the operating system with the ps command you will find that all the oracle processes they run as the linux process every process is a linux process and on, in contrast on windows an oracle background process is a thread of execution within an oracle instance process so if you take to windows where we run oracle database if we run oracle database then you will see that it is not the series of processes you will see uh, in the list of services because in windows processes are called as services you will see that one single service over there run by the windows in the name of the oracle instance and under that one single service there are many threads of the different processes which are not visible in the list of the services and so on Windows, there are the Oracle processes run as the threads under the single operating system process which is named after the instance of the Oracle database. When we use the uh, system application like Oracle, you can see that because it is a multi-user system, there are two modules primarily run in the system uh, application application system all connected database users must run following two models to access database systems when we are trying to connect and perform operations on the database then we actually connect to an oracle instance and there are two modules primarily you can see the first of the module that is the application of oracle database utility if you have developed some application say in java or say .NET or something, some language external to the Oracle database which connects to the Oracle database and allows the user to perform certain operations or you can use an Oracle tool like SQL Star Plus that is Oracle database utility. So it is program or tool that issues SQL statement and that primarily we call as the front end as we have seen here. Then Oracle database core that is actually the oracle system in the background which processes and interprets the SQL the purpose of the oracle database code is to interpret, receive and then process the SQL statement fired by the user and on behalf of the user perform those operations that have been spread out in the SQL and that we call as necessarily the backend then there are different types of processes as you can see 
in the Oracle database. The types of processes are three here. That is client process. Client process which runs on the client that is the terminal. It is not the part of the server. And the purpose of the client process is to run the application. The application can be developed in any of the languages, say Java or .NET or PHP or for that matter any language, say Proxy or even the SQL Star Plus as we have said earlier. So that client process which supports this application has to run on the client that is on the terminal and that is what exactly it means run application or Oracle tool code. Another that is Oracle process that is actually you know maps to the second module as we have seen okay in the earlier discussion. Oracle process run Oracle database code. So it is actually the part of Oracle system code and there are two types of processes running over there that is background processes short form of background processes sometimes you will uh, if you refer to the Oracle books or Oracle manuals then it is called as BG processes and the purpose of BG processes is to you know perform the instance recovery if an instance fails that is a running database fails and then you restart an automatic recovery can be applied to the Oracle database that we call it as instance recovery then cleanup for example if a terminal which is connected to the Oracle database is in between some transaction and if the terminal goes down then the cleanup will have to perform like releasing of the logs releasing of the uh, memories acquired by the sessions etc and so that is also done by the background processes then redo writing that is when any user performs any transaction some change is done to the database a history of change is required to be maintained for the future recovery and that is what redo writing is and so these are only a few of many background tasks required to be performed using the background processes. Then there are server processes. Obviously, when the user fires an SQL, the SQL itself is required to be processed before it fetches the data for the user or performs the action that has been specified in the statement of SQL and server process thus uh, in overall in broad sense passes the SQL that is resolves the references of uh, the different objects made in the SQL statement then when the SQL query has to be executed before it is executed it has to be planned and ex execution plan will have to be drawn by the uh, Oracle database system uh, actually the optimizer which is part of the Oracle database will perform the planning and this planning will be get done by server process then it will read the blocks if the data is not there already in the memory then the data will have to be brought from the data files into the memory and so that is reading of the blocks that is data blocks will also be done by the server process. Then there are slave processes. Slave processes basically are the additional processes, right? For example, say one DBWR process, we are going to see what DBWR process is. If not enough to write the dirty buffers back to the data file, then some additional DBWR processes can be started to support that one. And so such a process can be called as a slave process. So to perform additional tasks or reduce the burden on the single process uh, in the database then that is called as a slave process. There are the processes which are divided into two broad categories in the Oracle that is one is mandatory background process and then second is the optional background processes. <coughs> we will see the list of the mandatory background processes here. S1 that is system monitor that is the short name for uh, system monitor monitors the instance and applies the recovery as we have seen here here the background process instance recovery actually the same we are talking about here the S1 process is part of the Oracle system is the process which runs in the background which monitors the instance and when the instance fails that is for some reason, say for example, the power supply on the server goes down. 
then when the server is restarted the database which has been left in the inconsistent state at the time of abnormal shutdown will have to be recovered because oracle cannot open a database that has been left in the inconsistent state in last execution then the s1 process will perform that automatic recovery so it keeps on monitoring the instance it applies the recovery apart from this the s1 process performs the coalescing of the table spaces that is when the table spaces are fragmented it has pockets of empty spaces sandwiched between the utilized blocks then uh, just as the defrag tool in the uh, window the coalescing of those empty spaces will have to be done so that larger size of extents can be created and that is also done by the s1 process then there is p1 process that is process monitor process it is actually the cleaning up and freeing logs and resources that is exactly what we have seen here that clean up the process is responsible for recovering from a session failure for example if there is breakdown on the client side if the client has been in between some transaction then when the transaction starts automatic logs are established on the various resources like rows in the table then it has got some memory provided in the server that is called as pga and uh, such things are required to be released when the session goes down because nobody knows when that session will come up and will ever anybody remember to continue with the same task that it was being performed when the session failed and so it is worthwhile to roll back all those changes that were pending at the time of failure and clean up all the resources and that is done by the process monitor process that is pmon process then that is dbwm or sometimes also called as dbwr so that is database writer or data blocks writer so when the user performs any transaction makes the changes to the data contained in the data blocks those data blocks which are called as dirty blocks they have to be written back to the data files and that particular event when that is written is called as checkpoint and so in a way dbwr process which writes chain databases in the memory to the hard disk that is data files and so writing is called as checkpoint and so we can say that dbwr process is responsible for performing the checkpoints then there is lgwr process writes the redo buffers to the redo log files whenever there is any change performed by the user the changes are uh, the history is generated for those changes because in future when the recovery will be required then this history is useful to restore the database to the point to the exact point of failure and so this history is recorded somewhere and that is a set of redo log files you can visit to the physical uh, structure of the database one lesson has been there on the same channel you can visit to that and then know more about the redo log files and the lgwr process as you can see here is responsible for writing the redo log buffers that is a memory area where the redo logs are redo log records are stored and they are then written to the redo log file by this process then cyclicity that is checkpoint process we have seen that when the dirty buffers in the memory that is the blocks containing the chain data is returned back to the data file is called as checkpoint however checkpoint is not performed by the checkpoint process but it is performed by the dbwr process as we have seen earlier but checkpoint process basically has to update the synchronization information control file contains the copies of the headers of the data files and contains synchronization information in the form of combination of three numbers that is scl system chain number cpc that is checkpoint counter and lsl that is log sequence number and when these three numbers are written in the headers of the data files also they are required to be synchronized with the copies of those headers in the control file and that is what exactly the cyclicity process is doing updates control file headers and db file header with checkpoint information that is what exactly uh, i have just described and then there is reco process actually 
Repo process is part of the distributed database systems. It is a mandatory process in the distributed database systems. When the database is distributed, a single large database is divided into multiple parts and they run from the different physical servers. And as such, a session can perform seamlessly a transaction across all such databases when that is required to be done, it is a very complex situation where if that transaction fails, then the distributed database must resolve the failure of this transaction because in a multi database system, that is database running in the distributed mode, if one of the databases fails at the time when the transaction is going on, then such a transaction is called as the in-doubt transaction and there is a special process involved in resolution of that that is called as 2PC as you can see here that is called as two-phase commit and the repo process is responsible for implementation of two-phase commit in the two-phase commit you have got two phases that is one phase which is uh, called as the actual commit phase and the second the first one the another phase is called as the determination phase where basically oracle first determines whether all the transactions have gone through on all the servers or not and then depending upon that will issue the actual commit to all such where the successful message has been received by the uh, broker node then the two phase commit will be carried out and the database will uh, commit all the databases will in synchronism, in synchronism commit all the changes but if any of the server has been opted out then the repo process running of that server will keep on contacting with the other database systems and then when the channel is through and the repo process can reach to the other database systems and depending upon what the other databases have done with that particular transaction whether they have committed or rolled back the repo process will carry out the same transaction, the same action in the uh, in the case of the failed transaction or in the failed server. Then there are optional background processes, ARCH, that is archival process. Remember that Oracle stores the history of changes made to the database in the redo log files as we have seen. Those redo log files are called as online redo log files. And these online develop files, they are minimum two, and obviously there can be more than two, and they are used in round robin fashion in the cyclic order. And when the redeveloped files are filled, they are required to be archived. That is, the history is required to be uh, preserved for the future recovery. And that archival is required to be made by some background process, and that purpose is served by the ARC that is archival process that is the purpose as has been written here copy online new logs to archival destination Oracle allows about 10 different locations even remotely where the field online new log files can be sent over the FTP and so that always we have got an archive new log file available healthy online uh, offline new log file available which has held the history of all the changes carried out until the point of failure and so the recovery is possible the when database is in the archive log mode then only this process will run if the database is not running in the archive log mode then this process will not be uh, running and uh, in that case uh, the recovery will not be possible remember that this process is optional because it is possible that a production database might run in the archive log mode whereas in case of only the development setup or in case of only the testing setup the database may not run in the archive log mode and so this process may be off then the second process in the optional background process is job queue process this job queue process basically is used for running some scheduled job for example suppose uh, end of the day processing in the bank a program has been written in the PLS script and that program is required to be run at some point of time say after the end of the day then 
there is nobody to run that program. Only such a such a job in the form of that written program in PLSQL will be scheduled to run at a particular point of time and repeatedly at some interval. Then will be handed over to the job queue process, and then job queue process will carry out that action by running that program periodically and frequently uh, at whatever has been said. So uh, in this way, it is like a cron process in the operating system that is Unix or Linux. So in this way, we have covered the Oracle process architecture. Thanks for watching.